Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us talk about the nervous system in vertebrates. So when I say vertebrates, we see a wide variety of organisms. So most of them are very much familiar with us, right? Starting from the animals which we see around us like dogs, rats, cats, the birds, fishes, and the amphibians, human beings, of course. So here, as we all know, they are they have got highly complex nervous system because their bodies are also very much complex. And the body is very, very well organized as well. So their nervous system is also very advanced, very organized and very complex. So their nervous system consists of these different parts, like a very highly advanced and complex brain, they have something called spinal cord. They also have some peripheral nerves, right? So this spinal cord, it is not exactly spinal cord in all the vertebrates. In human beings, we call it as spinal cord. Others have some other, kind, I mean, they also have a vertebral cord, right? So in human beings, it is spinal cord. So in vertebrates, it is very much complex. So now... In vertebrates, considering human beings as one of the complex and advanced vertebrates, we will discuss the nervous system of human beings in detail. So we will talk about each and every part of the nervous system and we will see how they, how, what do they, I mean how and how, what do they function and how do they function, right? So I hope that uh, you got some idea about the nervous system, what is nervous system and how did the nervous system actually evolve right okay so all these things i already mentioned that is they are highly cephalized highly complex and specialized sense organs okay so with this we will start with the human nervous system let us now talk about the human nervous system so needless to say the same examples once again where do we find our nervous system actually working for example when you give some instantaneous responses not only instantaneous but relatively faster responses or the faster processes when compared to the endocrine system for example when a person gets an electric shock he immediately jumps or when a man is running seeing a tiger or when you play when you touch a hot object and immediately remove your leg or watering off your mouth on seeing some delicious food when you think while writing exams, you would have seen that when you see the questions, you it, it is your brain who thinks the answers and then you start writing, right? So these are all examples of nervous system. So let us now see what actually constitutes the nervous system, what makes the nervous system, what is there inside it that actually um, transfers information from one part of the body to another. Well, the basic structural and functional unit of a nervous system. So there is a basic unit. For example, what is the basic unit of a, a living organism? It is a cell, right? So similarly, there are special type of cells which together form this nervous system. So they are the nerve cells, which is also known as neuron. So neurons are the basic structural and functional unit of the nervous system. Right, so here in this picture, you can see the entire nervous system where you see so many nerves running here and there throughout the human body, right? Now, this entire complicated system is made up of small neurons. So many such neurons combine together to form this nervous system. Now, this is how a neuron looks like, right? So it, it looks quite strange that so many neurons together form this because here we are showing you a magnified image of the neuron but actually they are very very small so many such neurons will join up to form all these structures so let us first try to understand the structure of a neuron what does the neuron contain that it can transmit information from one part of the body to another so let us study the structure of a neuron so a neuron can be classified into three parts. There are three main parts as far as the structure of a neuron is concerned. So what are the three parts? The first part is a cyton. So what is cyton? It is nothing but the cell body. So here in this picture, 
it, I have shown you the structure of a neuron. So this is the cell body. So the inside of a cell, the contents of the cell, which consists of the cytoplasm and the cell organelles. So that is the cell body. It has a well-defined nucleus. So here you can see the nucleus, the brown colored structure. The cytoplasm has nasals granules and neurofibrils. So these are two new terms here, nasals granules and neurofibrils. What are these? So when I talk about nasal granules, these are granular structures which are present in the cytoplasm. They are, in fact, you can say they are like rough endoplasmic reticulum. We have spoken about all these cell organelles, right, when we were studying the lesson on cell in class 9. So nasal granules are nothing but rough endoplasmic reticulum which have free ribosomes. So they are actually the site for synthesis of proteins. Proteins get manufactured here. So the function of nasal granules is synthesis and release of proteins. So the function of nasal granules is very similar to the function of endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus. So it is nothing but rough endoplasmic reticulum which helps in protein synthesis. Now what are neurofibrils? The name fibrils means some fiber like structures thin thread like structures which run through the cytoplasm and extends into axon and dendrites. Now I will tell you what are axons and dendrites but inside the cytoplasm there are many thin hair like structures. So they are known as neurofibrils. The next part is dendrites. So what are dendrites? These are short thread like structures arising from the cyton. So here you see this was the cell body. From the cell body some small hair like structures are present. These are dendrites. So dendrites are nothing but they are also neurofibrils. I mean inside this cyton you have many hair like structures. Some of these neurofibrils will only form dendrites. Right? So what is the function of dendrites? This is very important. They receive impulses from outside and pass to the cyton. So that means they actually help in bringing information inside. So they will bring information inside from outside. So now we will see once we know the structure of a neuron, we will actually know that how information gets transmitted in the nervous system. So dendrite will bring impulses from outside. It will send, I mean the stimuli, external stimuli, it will bring that inside inside the cell body and the third part is axon what is axon it is a long thread like structure arising from cyton so here you see this was the cytoplasm small hair like structures were dendrite there is one long hair like structure see this is this orange colored hair it is quite long when compared to the dendrites so this long structure is known as axon Right? So this axon is also formed from the neurofibrils. So that's why I told that inside the cell body there are many neurofibrils. Some of them form dendrites and any one of them extends to form the axon. Now these axons has fibrous branches at their ends which are called axon endings. So here you can see this is the axon and at, towards the end they have branch like structures. So these are known as axon endings or nerve endings. Axon endings of one neuron are loosely placed on cyton of other neurons. So that is how the neurons are connected to each other. See, here I have shown a better diagram. Let us suppose if this is the axon. Let us say if this is axon. This is the axon. So here we have the nerve endings of the axon. I mean the axon endings. And this is another neuron. So this is the dendrite of another neuron. So there is a small gap between the axon endings of one neuron and the dendrite of the other neuron. So this gap is known as synapse. So synapse is a loose connection between two neurons. So whenever information has to travel from one neuron to another, the information must cross this gap. That is, it must cross the synapse. And that is how information travels from one neuron to another. So what is the purpose of this axon endings? It conducts impulses away from the cyton. So now you understand, dendrites bring information inside and axon endings take the information outside. So from the axon endings, the information actually crosses the synapse and goes to the next neuron. And that is, that is how information 
who gets transferred from one neuron to another. So then information transfer takes place in a nervous system. Clear? So these are the three important parts of neurons, cyton, dendrites and axon. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.